good day to all the viewers there is a channel called world of competitive chemistry on that you can find various levels of chemistry which are related with the entrance and the competitive exams as well on the international floor if you are aspiring for in addition uh, india is conducting csir net exam in the field of chemistry for the lectureship examination, uh, most of the previous years, all the question papers are available over there. And a uh, brief description about engineering chemistry, all the um, topic-wise uh, content is available over there. And the entire 10th standard physics uh, chemistry together are available on the channel. In addition, India level, JE advanced, JE mains uh, exams will be conducted for the admission into IIT and NIT stream. The previous year series of sessions are available on this channel and um, NEET chemistry will be conducted all across India. NEET exam will be conducted uh, once in a year. So that uh, kind of sessions also covered over there with related uh, chemistry. Uh, and the MSET exam previous year questions also covered uh, with the detailed explanation with the authentic information. So all kind of quality information you can find upon the channel world of competitive chemistry. Right. So uh, in addition to all these, whatever sessions we covered can fetch in for your competitive exams, you are preparing for any government uh, related job. Um, aspirations are there in that also general studies question paper, general science content you can crack. So let's enter into our today's session. The Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry in the year 2008 was awarded jointly to Osamu uh, Shimomura. Martin Chalfi and Roger Sion for the discovery and development for the green fluorescent protein called GFP, right? So here, how many scientists are there? Osamu Shimomura, Martin Kalfi and uh, Roger Sion. These three scientists recorded with the prestigious world recognition called the Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry for the year 2008 for uh, the development of green fluorescent protein GFP, right? These are the scientists which are recorded with the one by third of each uh, contribution towards the Nobel Prize. Osamu Shimomura, Martin Kafegi, and Rokat Sayan together recorded with the Nobel Prize, right? Let's see what is the brief info regarding these three eminent scientists, right? So Osamu Shimomura belongs to Marine Biological Laboratory, Woodhall, What's Hall, USA, and the Boston University Medical School of USA, right? Uh, Martin Caffey, Columbia University, New York, United States of America. Rogel Sion, Howard Hawks Medical Institute, University, California, San Diego, Lazula, United States of America. These three scientists together explored the discovery and development of green fluorescent protein GFP so that this is accorded with the Nobel Prize. Glowing proteins are guiding star for biochemistry. In the field of biochemistry, the kind of protein, uh, why it is called a glowing means Fluorescent materials are having lighter, uh, glittering nature. A remarkable, brightly glowing green fluorescent protein, GFP, was first observed in the jellyfish, Aquaria Victoria, in 1962. It is a kind of pigment they noticed, being it is the fluorescent protein which is naturally uh, inbuilt in a jellyfish called Aquaria Victoria. That was first ever uh, observed in the year 1962. Since then, this protein has become one of the most important tools to use to contemporary bioscience. With the aid of uh, GOP researchers have developed ways to watch uh, processes that were uh, previously invisible. So there is a kind of technology we are imbibing. We are diagnosing. It is used as the diagnosizing technique. Okay. So by means of this fluorescent dye, whenever we are inserting into the body, along with the fluids, the dye also moving so that we can visualize what will be the moment of that one. And if any fluctuations, obstacles uh, absorbed in that path so that they can notice uh, any kind of damage, any sensitive uh, uh, rupture, any, any kind of abnormality that can be understood. This is the kind of diagnostic technique where the pigment, the fluorescent pigment or fluorescent protein can be inserted so that we can observe, we can identify where the uh, where the kind of uh, um, uh, abnormality we can we can have. 
such as the development of no cells in the brain or else in the cancer. Wherever cancer cells are spreading, there you can go for the monitoring by means of this fluorescent protein or else development of nerve cells. So even in the nerve cells, how the nerve cells are developing, that also can be absorbed over there and even brain functioning can be analyzed by means of these fluorescent proteins, which is very complicated to understand by normal means. <laughs> Tens of thousands of different proteins reside in our living organism controlling important chemical process and a minute detail. If this protein machinery malfunctions, illness and disease often follow. That is why it has been imperative for bioscience to map the role of different proteins in the body. Right. So here... Um, different kind of proteins are available inside so that whatever activity is there exactly knowing about individual activity of each and every protein is very difficult to process being uh, all the metabolic functions and uh, kind of systems available are very complex in nature so that 100 percent analyzation may not be possible so that is the kind of uh, mm, that is a kind of there is a vacuum in that research Story behind the discovery of GFP is one which three Nobel Prize laureates in the leading roles. Osamu Shimamura first isolated GFP from jellyfish. First of all, it was taken from the jellyfish and absorbed. So being it is a glowing one, uh, that is a kind of a fluorescent material, Aquaria Victoria, which drifts with the currents of the west coast of North America. He discovered that this protein glows bright green under ultraviolet light. Uh, if light strikes on the pigment, what happens? Immediately it will glow. So that glowing tendency can give the highest visualization tendency, highest uh, easy visualization tendency. That's the reason why it, it was taken into the concept of research in order to synthesize in the laboratory. <clears throat> Martin Sheffield demonstrated the value of GFP as a luminous genetic tag for the various biological phenomena that was taken as a biological tag in, in order to introduce into the biological phenomenon and how it can be imbibed that kind of genetic tag um, kind of a new version for that uh, that pigment whatever they uh, abstracted so he explored upon. Uh, in one of his first experiments, sorry, in one of his first experiments, he colored six individual cells in the transparent round, uh, round worm. Uh, this is the kind of a Keanu Robbins uh, elegance with the aid of GFP, GFP, right? So green fluorescent protein is abbreviated as GFP, where... So here, six individual cells were taken and uh, transparent round worms will be taken into that uh, kind of a dish in that. So they got colored with these uh, GFP pigments. GFP proteins are uh, inserted onto their um, surface. So that kind of experiment was done by Martin Chope. Rogat Sayun contributed to our uh, general understanding how GFP fluoresces. He also extended the color palette beyond green, allowing researchers to give various proteins and the cells different colors. This enables scientists to follow several different um, biological process at the same time. Right? What Roger Sion did? So he contributed general understanding. Yet what is the tendency? What is the mechanism behind how it is flourishing? How it is. Uh, 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 is how it is giving the brightness okay that kind of studies got carried by this uh, roger sign he also extended color palette beyond green allowing researchers to give the various proteins and the cells different colors so in general natural source they collected from the jellyfish the green color pigment apart from that some other colors also can be extended can be uh, grown so that creativity part also taken by this roger sign uh, so this is about the contribution regarding this uh, GFP protein invention. So this protein invention, not only the kind of new thing, rather it is the kind of a great application we can say, because um, let me give the simplest example in order to, in order to analyze the heart functioning, we will go for the diagnostic method called the angiogram. 
uh, based upon die moment speed or velocity of die only how the, the functioning and how the nerve cells are working entire thing will be analyzed if you are not able to if you are not able to moving forward that indicates what there is a kind of block in that okay so wherever you are moving so wherever you are working so that the that pigment may not move forward so that is the kind of um, diagnostic tool they developed so that is a fluorescent protein it is most valuable invention in the field of medicine which uh, gives the a uh, kind of uh, identification of so many type of uh, dreary diseases we can say even brain functioning clearly analyzed by means of these proteins so that uh, we can easily understand how that uh, brain functioning will be there which can't be imagined or uh, so uh, which, which can't be captured by means of other uh, other kind of uh, diagnostic tools this is the way Nobel Prize in the chemistry 2008 is given for the fluorescent protein invention, right? Let's go with the question number two. Question number two collected from Cambridge International Assessment. And uh, where we have a table uh, and the uh, solutions of J, K, L, M are provided over. And uh, they are uh, given with the colors whenever it is in contact with the universal indicator, different solutions are contacted with the universal indicator. J solution is able to provide a green color, K will provide a red color, L will provide a purple color, M will give rise to an orange color. If this is the condition, uh, among these many solutions like J, K, L, M, which are categorized as acidic based on the color, appearance we have to identify which are called acidic in nature among j k l m you can uh, define you can identify k and m are the category of acidic how can we say you can clearly identify uh, acidic or uh, red color is the kind of uh, what uh, universal indicator ph range will be for orange color will be a five and a six will be for yellow all these together all these three together are regarded as acids and seven being neutral so here universal ph indicator seven gives a neutral one from eight to nine to ten you can notice intense green color and uh, sky blue color and navy blue color all these together are regarded as bases on universal indicator color change so by taking this concept into the mind uh, you can clearly identify red and orange are the part of red and orange are the part of acidic. Red and orange are the part of acidic K and M are designated as acidic solutions. Let's move on to another question. Question number three collected from 2016. Uh, J advanced question paper, paper one question it is. For the involved sugar, the correct statements are specific rotation plus sucrose plus maltose l minus glucose and l plus fructose in the aqueous solution plus 66 degrees plus 140 degrees minus 52 degrees plus 92 degrees respectively all these are called what specific rotation values right so invert sugar is prepared by acid catalyzed hydrolysis of maltose invert sugar is prepared by Acid catalyzed hydrolysis of maltose. Maltose gives rise to the invert sugar. Whether it is correct or not, we have to check it out. Invert sugar is an equimolar mixture of D plus glucose and D minus fructose. This is perfect answer. Specific rotation of invert sugar is minus 20 degrees. On the reaction with bromine water, invert sugar forms a saccharic acid as one of the product. So among these, the correct answers are only B and C. A and D are wrong one. Let's see. Invert sugar is prepared by invert sugar, also known as invert sugar syrup. Invert syrup. Uh, this is a liquid sweetener made from the granulated table sugar and water. Whenever table sugar was taken, that is called a sucrose in a chemical sense. Added with water so that it will be hydrolyzed to whatever solution coming out after hydrolysis is said to be a invert sugar. Table sugar is a compound scientifically known as a sucrose. It is formed when one of the sugar molecule called a glucose chemically binds with any the fructose molecule. The combination of glucose with fructose, then only you can get the dimer called a sucrose. 
Invert sugar created via hydrolysis, a process in which uh, sucrose is mixed with the water, heated until bond between the glucose and fructose broken. Enzymes are acidic in the ingredients like uh, citric acid, cream of tartar can be added to expedite the process. D plus glucose and uh, D minus fructose are the isomers commonly available in monosaccharides. The ratio of conversion D plus and uh, D minus fructose glucose isomerase is required. The combination of these two is giving rise to the table sugar. Whenever table sugar got hydrolyzed so that you can achieve D plus glucose and D minus fructose respectively, right? The specific rotation. Another term we gone through is a specific rotation. Obviously, glucose is of dextro-rotatory so that it is indicated with a positive sign in front so that it will show the clockwise rotation and uh, possess this 52.5 degrees of uh, specific rotation for glucose. But fructose strongly levorotatory having anti-clockwise rotation whenever uh, kept in a polarimeter so that negative 92 degrees is accorded for this uh, fructose molecule while inverting. The specific rotation gradually undergoes a change in direction of polarized light from 66 to minus 19.7. Okay. Whatever specific rotation we have for these two molecules, whenever we are mixing up these two molecules together, so that initially you can achieve the plus 66.5. As time passes, so that slowly it will be running down and reaches the value minus 19.7 degrees. Minus 19.7 degrees, you can round it up as a minus 20 degrees in world sugar specific rotation. That is the fine answer for this question number three. And let's go with the bromine water reaction and the invert sugar. Whenever invert sugar is treated with the bromine water, uh, obviously glucose will be treated being uh, aldehyde is at the topmost. Aldehyde will be uh, bromine water is a mild oxidizing agent so that uh, aldehyde will be converted into carboxylic acid and uh, ELSA chain remains the same. Whatever chain is there that remains the same will not be reacted further. And uh, the, that entire molecule with the uh, topmost aldehyde into a carboxylic acid that is designated as a gluconic acid where aldehyde group gets oxidized to the carboxylic acid fructose will not be affected by bromine water. Why? Because fructose is a kind of ketone. Ketone will not react with the bromine water in under normal conditions. This is the way, this is the way bromine water will give rise to the gluconic acid rather than saccharic acid. You can cancel out this option D. And invert sugar prepared from glucose and fructose but not by the maltose. So strike up this as well. Only the possibility is invert sugar having equimolar ratio of D plus glucose and D minus fructose is a correct. Specific rotation invert sugar initially plus 66 after uh, as the time passes it will reach as minus 20 slowly and it will be stable right. By this we concluded the question 3, question 3 correct options are B and C. Let's move on to question number 4. Question number four is collected from organic chemistry point of view. A treatment of the compound O with KMNO4 H plus gave P, which on heating with ammonia gave Q. The compound Q on treating with bromine NaOH produced R. On strong heating Q gave S, which on further treatment with the ethyl 2 bromo propanoate in the presence of potassium hydroxide followed by acidification gave compound. Right. So these many series of reactions are started with the compound O. O is known to you. That What is that? So this is a kind of benzene ring. On this benzene, how many carbon chain? 1, 2, 3. Uh, here also 1, 2, 3. 1, comma 2, propyl. So both are propyl chains only. Propyl, benzene. 1, comma 2, propyl, benzene will be taken as a starting material. And the camino for what is the role of... Uh, mm, Potassium permanganate under acidic conditions, that is the strong oxidizing agent. Whatever the length of chain, you may take 1 meter or 1 kilometer, uh, that will be 
oxidize to give rise to the carboxylic acid only though it is the three carbon chain one carbon chain four carbon whatever irrespective of the chain length whatever chains are present on this side chain of the benzene by the action of cameno4 or else k2cr2 o7 both are strong oxidizing agents so that you can accord the carboxylic acid so here carboxylic here carboxylic that is called ta talic acid the talic acid is the compound P you can achieve talic acid upon reaction with ammonia. You can go with the ammonia, <coughs> sorry, ammonia reaction, carboxylic acid, ammonia, acid base reaction so that we will get amide linkage so that diamide will be originated called the Q. The Q will be treated with bromine water. This is called Hoffman reaction. Hoffman hypobromide reaction. So here NaO Br will be generated. NaO Br is more specific for the conversion of amide into amine because CO will be disappeared and that there is a generation of NH2 as the functional group. So that will be R. So till here we, we will discuss this uh, uh, next part will be covered in the next session because this is another question we will go with up to uh, product R only we have to go for today's question right let's see this is the expected answer where NH2 and NH2 on adjacent to carbon atoms which is called anthranilic acid the expected answer so this is called what 1 comma 2 dipropyl benzene will be taken as a starting material and so many reactions got carried and finally anthranilic acid is achieved as the final product R let's see what are the what are the series of reactions initially benzene alkyl benzene we can say dialkyl benzene which is said to be 1 comma 2 dipropyl benzene 1 comma 2 dipropyl benzene is a starting material treated with strong oxidizing agent camino for under SV conditions entire alkyl chain got oxidized to carboxylic acid so that we can achieve thalic acid thalic acid is a, a dicarboxylic acid in the aromatic ring Move on to ammonia. Ammonia, when added, what happens as it turned into an amide linkage? These two amides will be originated. Now, reaction with bromine NaOH. This bromine NaOH is uh, giving rise to the NaOBr sodium uh, hypobromite. That uh, has sodium hypobromite is a Hoffman reaction, which is selectively removes the CO CO, and uh, you can achieve NH2 here. That is called a Benzene 1 to diamine, which is said to be benzene 1 to diamine, is the IUPAC name. IUPAC stands for International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry, and this is simply called anthranilic acid. This is the expected product you can achieve in the option A. This is the way uh, question number four got answered. Uh, move on to question number five. It is collected from the IMSIT examination conducted by uh, Telangana in the year 2022. Aluminium metal treated with aqua sodium hydroxide and the P and Q products are obtained. What are P and Q? Okay. Metallic aluminium upon reaction with sodium hydroxide, P and Q will be obtained. There, there will be the products. Always, always remember one, uh, one what common thing for all the metals are whenever metal is treated with either acid or else base always there is a liberation of hydrogen gas is the common one so that here alkali sodium hydroxide is called purely alkaline solution called basic and aluminum is a metal so that there is a liberation of hydrogen if you observe all the options among four only the option with the hydrogen is three so that you can put tick mark over here without knowing the chemical reaction this is a hint hidden here always remember any metal upon reaction with either acid or base that gives rise to the hydrogen gas as the one of the product so that hydrogen liberation indicates this is the reaction remaining options are not uh, available with the hydrogen gas and one more product is called a sodium tetrahydroxy aluminate and moreover you have to put on uh, alum aluminate trick this is the way, this is the way uh, the product will be generated. Let's get the clear explanation for this reaction. Sodium hydroxide, aluminum metal under aquated conditions. So if we are going to treat up, sodium aluminate will be generated with the liberation of hydrogen gas. This is the way reaction can be explained. For question number five, option number three is the correct answer. Let's move on to question number six, the last question of the session. 
Among the following elements, X exhibit maximum catenation and Y is the least abundant on the earth. What are X and Y? Most of the people are familiar for the catenation. Catenation is nothing but if you are able to generate the long lengthy chain with the same repeated atoms, repeated element, that is called a catenation. If you go for lithium, monatomic only. So there is no such kind of lengthy, rather it able to, it able to exist in that lithium only. Uh, if you go with beryllium, beryllium compound itself is not the polymeric, rather beryllium chloride is a polymeric in nature, right? But if you go for, if you go for carbon, carbon able to combine with any other carbons in that lengthy chain, you can go for a meter, kilometer, and uh, the, beyond that 100 kilometers, that extent also this carbon able to increase its chain length. That is called its catenation property. Catenation denotes as uh, any element having its own uh, binding with the same elements in order to increase the chain length is called a catenation. Binding ability of that element within, right? That is called a catenation. And why? Why is a kind of least abundant. So least abundant uh, um, element to be depicted. So here, uh, obviously carbon is the kind of, just now we gone through, among the entire periodic table, carbon is the element with the highest catenation property so that the options with the option 1, option 3, option 4 are having carbon so that you can, you may, you may have the chance to depict the answer either 1, 3 and 4. You can cancel out to 2. 2 is the example for semiconductor. Silicon, germanium are the class of semiconductor so that discard this one. Only the probability of after uh, option 1 and option 3, option 4. So that catenation is the property uh, by which carbon atom can bond with the number of other carbon atoms to form the straight chains, branched chains, ring systems of a high tendency to carbon to catenate because of high carbon-carbon bond strength. Okay, carbon atom having such a peculiar nature because it able to generate so many kind of bonds with their carbon atom in order to get the lengthy polymeric chain. Lengthy chains are possible. Either it may be a straight chain, a linear one, or else a certain branches may exist, or else entire molecules get combined, gives rise to a ringed one, ring type of uh, uh, structures also available so that this is the property purely belongs to the unique element called carbon move on to any other question another half of the question called germanium germanium abundancy is extremely less in the entire elements whichever occurred in the earth crust so that least abundant element in the earth crust is designated as the germanium 1.6 ppm is the its abundancy it is very tiniest quantity, lightest quantity. Earth's crust is approximately 1.6 ppm is accorded for the germanium abundance. Only few minerals like uh, uh, argyrorite, bryotite, germanite, uh, renirite, and uh, spalerite. All these are the kind of minerals where we can achieve the germanium in the extractable quantity, right? So these are called the minerals, but extremely less the lesser quantity availability that is 1.6 ppm is accorded. So the together you can mention carbon and germanium are the correct answer. Carbon, carbon symbolizes the catenation property and uh, germanium symbolizes the least abundant element on the earth crust. This is the way question number six is uh, answered with option number one. By this, we entirely completed the session and successfully achieved the uh, content related with the uh, related with the intermediate level uh, chemistry on the competitive floor. Definitely, who are watching, who are uh, who are more curious about the examinations, either maybe entrance or competitive, so that you have to go through the entire work, whichever we are going. In the world of competitive chemistry, so many series of sessions got carried and detailed informative uh, sessions are uploaded over there. Around uh, 470 videos are available over and uh, much more information is with you. Only the thing is you have to spend your valuable time and get the notes and repeat the sessions for several times so that uh, so that the content will be more familiar for you definitely you will crack whatever exams you are aspiring for wish you all the best and uh, 
sincerely requesting to like the channel comment in order to comment there is a question for the session if uh, the uh, if uh, carbon is taken into the consideration how many type of naturally available compounds you know which are composed by the carbon how many naturally occurring compounds are known to you which are composed by the carbon you can put the comment in this comment box for the session and share with us parents who are more serious about the examination and subscribe the channel so that we will get more quality content in the near future definitely every day the content will be uploaded so that it, it is a kind of a high information high impactful session we can say right thank you for watching